Hey guys, we're in beautiful Sedona, Arizona, and I'm looking at a Bosch powered electric bike. And I wanted to teach you a bit about the Intuvia display panel. That's what we're looking at here. It's, it's the larger version. They have a new one called the Purion. Sort of looks like this remote button pad, a little bit smaller, it's just gonna clean up the cockpit, but possibly more difficult to see and definitely a little bit trickier to use. It's not quite as deep as the Intuvia. But I love that this display can swivel forward and back if it's not over tightened, it can also be removed. It's this little tab on the back. It's very convenient for people who are commuting or if you have a mountain bike like this and you know you're going down some difficult terrain and you don't wanna accidentally crash and damage the display, you could take this off and just coast down. Very cool. So to activate this thing, you press the power button here. It boots up very quickly and down at the bottom, it's gonna tell us Performance Line CX. So that's the drive system that we've got. And sometimes they're kind of hidden and they don't always have the iconography to let you know what motor it is. It's a good idea to keep your eye on that just to confirm it. Up here at the top, we've got a five bar battery infographic. It's pretty useful, 20% increments. In the middle, there's speed. It's currently in miles per hour, but I'm gonna show you how to adjust that if you want kilometers per hour instead. And then below it, we've got all these different readouts. So this I button here and replicated over here, if you press that, it cycles through. So right now it says odometer, 50.1 miles. That's the lifetime distance this bike has traveled. Trip distance, that's this current trip, and you can reset it by holding the reset button. There we go, it's cleared. Clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and range. Range is really cool. It uses a combination of signals, including how full the battery pack is, the last mile to two miles of performance, the riding that you've actually been doing, the terrain, the tires, everything. It, it factors in how the bike is performing. And then it looks at the level of pedal assist to give you an estimate of how far it can keep going while the remaining battery is there. So if we hit up over here, plus or minus, we'll go from off, which just means it's basically performing as a bicycle, to eco. That's the lowest level of pedal assist. We don't have a full battery, but it says, okay, 42 miles. That's not as much as Bosch estimates on their website. They've tested with a range of bicycles in, in a wide range of conditions, but we're out here on the trails and this bike's a little bit heavier. It's full suspension, so you're getting some bob, knobbier tires, the dirt. I'm not an especially heavy guy, but when you combine all those things, plus a not full battery, 42 miles is what they're estimating. And to me, eco mode just takes off the weight uh, of the e-bike. It feels more like a regular bike, but it really doesn't feel quite as zippy or powerful for climbing. So if we go up to tour, that's where I spend most of my time. It says 21 mile range, sport, 16, and turbo, 13. So turbos, that's just super high performance. It's a lot of fun when you first get on an e-bike, you take it up to turbo and it's very impressive. Now with the Bosch CX drive system that we're looking at here, sport mode becomes EMTB mode. So that sounds for like electric mountain biking mode. Any Bosch CX motor can be upgraded to this new firmware and sport, basically it says, well, instead of just being one step above tour and one step below turbo, let's make sport the, the whole range. Like we're gonna give you all the way down from eco mode all the way up to turbo mode, depending on how hard you're pushing, how much torque you're exerting on the, the cranks and the pedals. Okay, so it's really cool because when you're mountain biking, sometimes you're on a smooth trail like this, you don't need a lot of extra power. You want it to be efficient. And sometimes it's annoying if the motor's like, ring, ring, and it's, it's maxing you out to 20 miles per hour. That's the top speed on this particular drive system, the CX, by the way. And you just, it's, it's kind of wasteful. So it's gonna say, okay, in sport mode now, we're gonna let you, if, if you're not pushing very hard, you're just flowing cool we're not going to give you a ton of power but as soon as you start to climb and you get up into the steep stuff and you need that power and it starts to feel the pressure really being exerted then it's going to kick it all the way up to 100 percent up to 75 newton meters of torque on this particular motor so that's a very cool new upgrade 2017 with the new firmware emtb mode on the right hand side there's a power indicator so as you're pushing and the motor's responding this little chart goes up and down according to how much energy is being used to power that motor. And then there are two arrows that would appear over here if I were riding, and it would say 
up, shift up, shift up, go to a higher gear because you're spinning really fast and the motor's going re, and that's not very efficient. We, if you shift gears, it's gonna be more efficient. And then the opposite, okay, you're going really slow and that motor's having to work really hard to turn those cranks, shift down, make it easier for the motor, get that natural cadence. So that's shift recommendation, those two arrows that would appear. They're not right now because I'm not riding. Now that's a pretty good overview but there are these other buttons. There's this walk mode button. Unfortunately, it doesn't work for every manufacturer. I've been told that Trek purposefully disabled it for their bikes. Um, I think it's a pretty cool feature because some of these bikes, I mean, this is a 54 pound electric bike. And let's say that you get to the really technical terrain up there and you're just like, I'm just gonna walk it. I'm just gonna, you know, th it's, this is heavier than most mountain bikes and pushing it is still kind of difficult. It's nice if you can get that motor to help you it's not like a throttle, it's not going super fast, it's, you know, it's a couple miles per hour, but it gets that, that back wheel turning slowly. So to activate that, you press walk mode button, and then it says walk assist, hold plus. So if I were to hold plus, that's gonna turn on the motor and it's gonna slowly push it forward. Pretty handy to have. So that's how that works. It doesn't work on all the bikes. Again, it doesn't work on some of the older bikes, but when it does work, you'll see that walk assist right here. Okay, and then lights. If we had headlights built into this bike, you could press this and it would turn on the lights. And you can see there's a little icon there for the light, which is very cool. Since the Bosch system is so popular and widespread, there are shops that will actually wire in lights for you and they can add those. Um, very, very neat feature to have. Something that's really useful if you're commuting, but not necessarily on a mountain bike. I'm gonna turn that off. The backlighting on this, it seems to be 100% of the time. It, it never really turns off. It's, it's fairly faint, but that's one of my complaints about the, the display because sometimes you just night riding, maybe the moon's out and you don't want any distraction. You can't really turn the backlighting off. This is a monochrome backlit display, grayscale. So it's, there's no color or anything, but it's fairly efficient. There's actually a battery inside this display unit so we could take it off and see it, it doesn't turn off. It's still on and it's got a little USB port on the side, a micro USB port, and that's used for diagnostics. Uh, Bosch uses the CAN bus system to diagnose all of the different components. So there's the button pad over there, there's the display there, there's the battery, there's the motor controller, there's the motor, there's the speed sensor. That's a lot of systems. And if you're a shop trying to fix this and diagnose a problem, it's very difficult to trial and error to plug things in and unplug them. So the CAN bus system, it's like on automobiles where you plug it in and it can diagnose quickly, but this doubles as a power port. So that's a micro USB port on the side there. And you can actually buy an adapter, which I have done off of Amazon. So this was just a micro USB to micro USB, mail to mail. And then I bought a special adapter so that it would work with my iPhone. And I did that because this supposedly puts out five volts 500 milliamps. And I was reading or was told that iPhones in particular need like 700 milliamps or more, but I plugged it in and it actually worked. And my phone was like, bing, had the lightning bolt. So even if it's just barely charging it or maintaining it, that's still kind of nice. You can imagine mounting your phone to the handlebars right here. Maybe you have a GPS or a, a separate light or a little radio system. You know, if you've got a cruiser like the Electro Townie Go, which uses the Bosch system, it's just really neat. It's something that it's really seamless, it stays out of the way. It's a nice option to have. And then the final component, or I guess menu system of the Bosch Intuvia is if you hold reset and I, it's gonna enter into our settings menu. So it says configuration. So clock, if we go ahead and hit the I button, it brings us to our next one, wheel circumference. English, so you can change languages. Units, kilometers to miles, right now I'm in miles. Time format, 24 hours or 12 hours, you can cycle through. Shift recommendation on or off, those are the arrows I talked about. Some people might feel that those are distracting and unnecessary. Power on hours, display version, and some other stuff in here. Voltage, DU number, this is where you get technical, where the shops can maybe help to diagnose some problems. Battery, yep, and then back to clock. So, so that's it, I apologize that I don't have quite all of the information about the settings, but I hope this has helped you to get a better idea of how to use the Intuvia display system and uh, just have a great time. I think it's one of my favorite displays just because it's so bright, it's big and easy to take off, easy to leave on. Um, I guess that's about it. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com for full bike reviews, but stuff like this, hopefully it's helpful and I hope you ride safe. Have a good day.
This view is meant to show the power going up and down and the shift recommendation.